I'm on a mission to indulge my passion for cakes and cars on a stateside road trip. I'm about to meet some of the greatest bakers America has to offer. Absolutely delicious. So get ready for a taste of the United Cakes of America. As I head up the East Coast, I'm in Philadelphia to take a bite out of history, as I meet a family whose bakery doors have been open since 1930. That's like the Antiques Roadshow, isn't it? <laughs> and I get to try an indulgent and intriguing cake, the legendary Pumple Cake. When it's all frosted, the cake weighs about 15 pounds. It is actually about the size of you, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's close. <laughs> And I'll be baking my own piece of personal history, my grandma's lemon curd butterfly cakes, and making the ultimate showstopper, my fire and ice cake. It's really the colour of these biscuits that gave me the inspiration for this cake. They actually look like flames in a fire. I've been passionate about baking since I was a boy. I think really uh, how I got started in cooking was through my grandmother and uh, watching my grandmother bake. That's where you learn the real art of baking. And my passion has brought me to the city of Philadelphia. Although only 90 miles away from New York, this city has a unique atmosphere and character. It's steeped in history. Philadelphia was the city where the American Declaration of Independence was signed. And I'm trying to find a bakery that's been in the same family since 1930, and they produce one of the most famous cakes from around here, the Washington cake. I know from personal experience that any great recipe is one that's been handed down through generations, giving you a real taste of history. But what's particularly special about my next stop is that the bakery has been handed down as well as the cake. There's the bakery. Hegel's Bakery is a real local gem. And I'm about to meet Richard Hagel, the son of the original baker, who's been involved in the shop since he was a boy. Richard. Yes. Good yeah, to see yeah. you. Good to see you. Talking uh, about old classic uh, bakeries, what about the old oh, classic Oh, look car? at that. That's beautiful. That <laughs> car is... That, I love that car, yeah. yeah. So and, tell us about the bakery, then. We were the first ones to move into this area. But you were born here, were you? I was born upstairs. My father opened here in 1930. In 1932, I was born here. So what, when, and, did you, when did you put your apron on for the first time in the bakery, then? I was pretty small. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was about seven or eight, but not like, as a baker, as a cleanup boy, uh, <laughs> cleaning pans. How important is it for the local community well, here? Well, this is where you celebrate your Christmas, your Easter, and uh, we are part of the community. And they know us and we know them. But this here is not where it's at, it's in the bake shop. Can I introduce yeah, you got, to the shop? Got, we've got to go to the shop then. <laughs> this bakery has been feeding the hungry mouths of Philadelphia with the same recipes, using the same equipment for over 70 years. And some of the staff have been here quite a while too. If you don't mind me saying, how, how long have you been here? About 34 years. And, and the experience between you guys, because how old are you? I'm a little older than you. How old are you? <laughs> I'll be 80 next week. You're 80 and you're... Yeah. 74. 74? Yeah, yes. Yeah. And still doing it the same way? Same way. Same way. Yeah. Both of us. And still got a smile on your face? Yeah. This place is a working museum. You can almost smell the history as you walk in. We believe in the taste of yesterday, and we're bringing it to you today. They're even using the same oven that Richard's dad used on the first day this place opened, along with the same recipe for their most famous cake the Washington cake. So, Richard, what do we have in there, then? We got the granulated sugar on the bottom, Yeah. the baking soda here, the baking powder, then your ginger to make it a spice cake. You also have cinnamon yeah. to make it that spice cake. Then it's into the mixer, and time to add a traditional baking ingredient, molasses. This is an old-fashioned, old-time recipe where it actually came from, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> George Washington? I'm not that old. 
<laughs> this cake is a favourite up the East Coast. It's thought that it was created in the 1800s for the first US president's birthday. There are lots of variations, but this is Hegel's style, with a touch of spice. What makes this cake so unlike any other I've ever seen is that cooked sponge is added to the raw mix. So what does this do to the cake? Keeps it stable or what? what, what? That's what gives you your texture. Right. Right. And your sponginess right. to the cake, you know. It's such a unique recipe, a local classic that was created in this bakery. Like every piece of equipment, a true original. See, this is one of the great things about coming here. It's, you know, the old school stuff. You just can't buy this stuff. This is a dough press. <laughs> What on earth is this? Donut cutter. Got it! <laughs> it's like the antiques roadshow, isn't it? <laughs> Once thoroughly mixed, it's weighed out by hand, spread into trays and into the oven. Three generations of Hegel's work in this place, and it's Richard's son, Glenn, who makes the finishing touches to the rich chocolate icing. So is there a next generation coming through? Yeah, I have uh, three boys uh, after me. They all work at the bake shop. Uh, and again, we're, we're a family. We work yeah. together, you know, yeah. and, and that's how we all are around so each other. It's very much family. So how do you finish off this then? All right, what I did is I heated up some fondant icing and yeah. put it in a pastry bag. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stripe it. It's warm, so it's going to melt together. And then we're going to draw those lines through on an angle. And then it's ready to eat. There's one member of the family I haven't met yet, and no cake leaves this shop without her say-so. So, Jeannie, you're in charge of the front of the shop. Yes. <laughs> so what's your favourite cake in the store, then? What... My favourite cake? All of them. <laughs> All of them? <laughs> yeah. I'm the official taster. You're the official taster. As soon as it comes out of the oven, I want to taste it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, this reminds me of my grandmother's baking. That's again. what we right, have. Right. Yeah. We try to bring that taste back again. It is delicious. You know. Good. I'm glad Thank you, you so much. You know, we're yeah. proud of what we do. Now, what fascinated me more than the Washington cake was the actual bakery itself. Fred and Richard working in there, the experience between the both of them really was second to none. And one of the dishes that I spotted there was butterfly buns. And I'm going to use that and use the recipe that my grandmother used to make for my version of butterfly buns. And my granny was my inspiration in my start of my cooking career. It was watching her make stuff exactly like this, using this wooden spoon, which is my grandmother's old wooden spoon, in a bowl similar to this. And what she used to do was mix together the sugar and the butter and she used to mix this together with the wooden spoon while watching Coronation Street. But the idea is you get it nice and creamed together. The key to this recipe is creaming the mixture by hand. So you can see the texture of this now just starts to go nice and light. Touch of vanilla essence. And I'm gonna break the egg and add two at a time. The idea is to keep this mixture nice and light and not add the eggs too quickly, because otherwise the mixture separates. Now I'm going to add about a teaspoon of baking powder to some plain flour. You get this lovely creamy mixture which you want there, and then we can just fill up the little moulds. Then we're going to pop that in the oven. 360 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 170 degrees centigrade, gas four, for about 15 minutes. And the best part of all this as a kid, you get this to eat. It's delicious. Now these have nicely risen, now for the filling. Now, this is where our family was a bit divided. My auntie would then fill it with a standard buttercream, but my gran, I think made better fillings. She would then use whipped cream and then this stuff. This is lemon curd. So you take the lemon curd and then fold it together. But the secret of it is you just want it slightly marbled 
Don't mix it any more than that. Then grab a piping bag. Fill it up, but keep the cream lovely and soft. So we'll leave that to one side. And to get the butterfly part, take each individual bun and cut into it. You don't cut level to it, just cut into it. Fill up your cakes with the marbled lemon cream. And then just turn these into butterflies. You get each individual piece of cake, cut it in half, and put them on. And there you have it, the classic simple butterfly bun with a recipe that's been in my family for 60 years. Thanks, Granny. When you taste a cake like this, this is the reason why I got into cooking. It's the best cake you can do. It is absolutely delicious. I'm on a journey to discover America's incredible cake culture, and I'm in downtown Philadelphia to track down the world's most calorific cake. Homer abroad, I love fresh markets. It's really about understanding the heart of the local community. And though America may be famous for its supersized malls, in Philadelphia, it's the mammoth market that draws in the crowds. This famous local landmark has been open since 1892, and every year, over six million visitors pour through its gates to sample the produce. If you're a real true foodie, and I like to think I am, then this is where you're gonna learn your trade. This is where you'll see things that you've never seen before. And that includes cakes. I'm trying to track down a monster of a cake that could only come out of America. The incredible Pumple Cake. I'm hoping this legend that I've heard so much about won't disappoint. I'm meeting its creators, Elizabeth and Eleanor, to find out exactly what this crazy cake is all about. So what is a pumple cake? Pumple cake is a two-layer cake with pies baked inside of each layer. The bottom layer is a chocolate cake with a pumpkin pie baked inside of it. And the top layer is a vanilla cake with an apple pie baked inside. And it's all held together with vanilla buttercream. So that's a pumpkin pie baked inside a chocolate cake and an apple pie baked inside a vanilla sponge. Right, I get it. Pumpkin and apple. Pumple cake. So the chocolate one first. Chocolate batter here. Okay. So I'm assuming because you put another ingredient inside a cake, you've got to treat it very, very differently, haven't you? Exactly. And yeah. we do every element from scratch. We make the pie dough, we peel the apples, we make the apple pie filling, we par-bake these pies. This is the pumpkin pie. Yeah. It's really good pumpkin pie on its own. Yeah. Even better when you bake it in chocolate cake. Go on then. Give it a little squish down. It's a first for me. It's a first for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Next up, the vanilla and apple pie layer. I still can't believe this actually works. Two different pies baked inside two different layers of sponge. What we had to figure out and what took most experimentation was how much batter goes on the bottom, yeah. how much batter goes on the top, and the perfect way to bake it. That's what took the finagling. This really is the most calorific cake I've ever seen. Just when you thought it couldn't get any sweeter, after it's baked, they cut it in sugar syrup to keep it moist, and then serious amounts of frosting are used to bring it all together. It is actually about the size of you, isn't it? It's, it's close. <laughs> when it's all frosted, the cake weighs about 15 pounds, and we cut it into 12 slices. So that means each slice weighs over a pound and should feed about four people. We do not recommend eating this cake on your own. I know America, you know, big is better, but what's the reaction to something like this cake here? Most people think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, we have our share of critics, though, also. Yeah. Some people find the idea of it kind of disgusting. Yeah. To them, I say, don't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> but I definitely want to try it. Time for the finishing touches. So what is this? Like a... This is colored sugar, colored sugar. Right. Uh, just adds a little bit of color, a little bit of sweetness. You just chuck it on? Just throw it on there. Try and get it on an angle. On an angle? Try. 
Is that all right? Yeah, you're doing great. How much do you want on it? Have you been to school for this? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah kind of. You don't hear of the expression in the US called less is more. I have heard that expression. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily agree with it. It doesn't really relate to this, though, does no, it? No, not to this case. Why not? Chuck it all off. <laughs> and there's the, there's the pumple. And there you have it, a pumple cake. Well, here goes. I'm about to go where no Yorkshireman has gone before. You shouldn't be criticised, because this is actually really good. Thank you. Really, really good. Look at the shark. No. <laughs> I think I, uh, I think I might be walking home, though. <laughs> a walk is not a bad idea after <laughs> having a slice of this cake. <laughs> I think that cake goes to prove that the Americans will have a go at almost everything and taste anything. What I'm going to do is something equally as elaborate. It's my fire and iced cake. First thing I'm going to do is make the cake. I'm going to make a Genoise sponge, which is different to a conventional sort of sponge cake in the way that you add the eggs first and it's not creaming in the butter and the sugar. You add the sugar. And I'm doing an eight egg mix. This will fill a 10 inch cake tin. You can tell when your mixture's ready, when you can lift off the whisk and draw a figure of eight. And if it still leaves the pattern when you're finished, that's when it's ready. You need two sponges to create this cake. The second one is a smaller version to sit on top. So halve the recipe and make one with four eggs. And then we add the flour. This style of sponge uses melted butter to keep it moist. Carefully fold in the flour, making sure you reach all the way to the bottom of the bowl. If we overbeat it at this stage, all that air will come out. Then we can pour the whole lot into the cake tin. It's quite dense, so we cook it slightly low oven for about sort of 25 to 30 minutes. So the biscuits are done what we call a French classic twill. It's using egg whites, butter, sugar, and flour. You just throw it all together. What this twill biscuit is, is a pliable biscuit, and it enables us to then twist it and turn it into different shapes. Now this needs to rest in the fridge, just to firm up. And I've got one here. You can see the texture of it changes slightly. And then this is where we can make the biscuits. And what we need, there's a grease proof paper mat and then you need two templates, little triangles just out of plastic and then we spread the mixture over the top of the template. Make small and large biscuits with two different sized moulds. You need to repeat the process about three or four times. Bake it in the oven for about three or four minutes until they're slightly golden brown. While they're still hot, you do need asbestos hands. You just lay them on the top. And you can mould them into shapes. If you haven't got one of these trays, laying your biscuits over two wooden spoons will work just as well. And it's really the colour of these biscuits that gave me the inspiration for this cake. They actually look like flames in a fire, so we need quite a lot of these. Now, the great thing about these sponges are they're nice and light, and I'm going to fill this with whipped cream and raspberries. And then I've got plenty of my biscuits here. So you get a difference in textures, really. So slice the cake in half. Brush each layer with stock syrup mixed with Kirsch, a layer of cream and fresh raspberries. And then you can repeat the process with the top. Then just like the pumple cake, you need to coat your cake in a classic buttercream frosting. And this is just whipped butter and icing sugar. You really don't need to be too precise especially around the edge, because so that's what we've got the biscuits for. But make sure it's completely covered so that the biscuits can stick to it. And mix and match the heights to these so they don't look all the same. To add even more wow factor, you can top the cake with some exotic flowers. We've got these birds of paradise flowers, which create these nice little flames off the top. 
This is the ultimate show-stopping cake. It really will impress at any celebration, and it's well worth the effort. To finish off, I'm making some sugar decorations. Heat up some caster sugar and water until it starts to caramelise. You can tell when the sugar's ready, when all the sugar's dissolved. And this is where you can go to town. Then carefully wrap your sugar around a rolling pin. The sugar slides off. This is really where cake decorating, you can go as mad as you want. And there you have it. Fire an ice cake. Try that at home. Philadelphia has treated me to two very unique cakes. Things I've never seen before, from the traditional to the cutting edge. And it's just reinforced why I've come here. I've learned a lot today. It certainly goes to prove in this job, you never stop learning. Seeing stuff like that pumpful cake is something that I've never seen before. So if you want to visit America and go to a fascinating and interesting place, then you need to head to Philadelphia.